Hello and welcome back to Football Daily, where today we are taking you through 10 decisions that nearly crippled their clubs. This could get ugly. 10. Terry Venables is deep pockets. You can see the logic behind reappointing El Tell as manager of Crystal Palace in March 1998. After all, he had cut his teeth at Palace, leading them to two promotions in the early 80s, had won trophies with Barcelona and Spurs, and taken England to the semi-finals of Euro 96. In 1996, IT millionaire Mark Goldberg took over as chairman and decided to pay Venables £135,000 just to talk to him about the possibility of taking over. Unsurprisingly, the ex-Chelsea and Spurs midfielder was won over. A media frenzy ensued and Goldberg talked of turning Palace into a European force in the coming years. Venables went crazy in the transfer market, bringing in six players for close to £12 million, including club record signing centre-back Valerian Ismail for £3.4 million from Strasbourg. Out of those six signings, only three of them lasted more than a season. El Tell left after only seven months, having cost the club nearly £1 million per month in wages, and his terrible transfer business not only relegated the club but left them in administration. 9. Zamparini's crazy ownership Whilst Palace might have been crippled by financial mismanagement, Italian club Palermo had to put up with being ruled by a trigger-happy, bordering on insane president Maurizio Zamperini. He sold his stake in Venezia in 2002 to buy then Serie B club Palermo, with the goal of taking it back to the Italian top tier. The perfect example of impatient ownership, he appointed 41 managers in 15 years. That's an average of 2.7 managers per year. Of those 41, only one was foreign and 17 lasted for two months or less. During his tenure, he has called for referees to be imprisoned, threatened to cut off his players' testicles and eat them in his salad, said he found coach Delio Rossi more attractive than his wife and called Adrian Mutu a crafty gypsy. As you would expect, results have been inconsistent under his temperamental ownership. The Achille have been relegated, promoted, reached the Coppa Italia final, played in the UEFA Cup and had players such as Barzagli, Cavani and Dybala represent them. Despite seemingly being permanently on the brink of ruin, Zamperini has just about kept them afloat. 8. A check in the south. He may have had a good reputation on the continent, having won over 50 caps for Czechoslovakia and Czech Republic, and turned out for Slavia Prague and Fiorentina amongst others, but little was known about Lubos Kubik on the south coast when he was appointed manager of Torquay in 2006. Having only managed Hradlek Kralov and Slash Roklau, sorry about the pronunciation, where he lasted just 11 games in his native Poland, it seemed like his close friendship with then Gulls chairman Chris Roberts was the key reason behind his appointment. Torquay fans were delighted with his appointment, hoping that the midfielder who had played at the 1990 World Cup and Euro 96 would be able to bring international level tactical preparation to the South Coast Minnows. But his reign was a complete disaster. He won just one of his 12 games before resigning in February. At the time of his departure, Torquay were five points adrift at the bottom of the Football League and were eventually relegated out of it for the first time in 79 years. 7. Red Nevin, Spain Gary Neville had one hell of a career, 23 trophies in 19 years at Man United, including two Champions Leagues and 10 Premier League titles. He retired in 2011 and made a seamless transition into punditry, with his forthright astute observations propelling him to the top of his profession. An England coach since 2012, Neville was persuaded to take the Valencia job on a five-month contract by close friend and lost chair owner Peter Lim in December 2015, in spite of his non-existent management credentials and Spanish. When Neville took over Valencia, who had finished fourth in 2014-15, they were in a supposed crisis under current Wolves boss Nuno Espirito Santo, lying in ninth and five points off the Champions League spots. But that was nothing. Three months later, Valencia had won three of 16 league games, failing to keep a clean sheet in the process, and had exited the Champions League, Europa League, Copa del Rey, and got thrashed 7-0 by Barcelona. With games against Sevilla, Barcelona, Villarreal and Real Madrid to play, and the club in 14th, only six points from relegation, never resigned. Relegation for the six-time Spanish champions Valencia, who had finished fifth, eighth and fourth in the preceding three campaigns, would have been nothing short of a disaster. Six. Arsenal in Doncaster. Look, poor appointments happen. Even administration can come about without any foul play, but the case of Doncaster Rovers and Ken Richardson is unlike anything before or since. The year is 1995 and Donny Owner Richardson hired two local criminals, one a former SAS operative, to burn down their Bellevue Stadium. The plan was to destroy the stadium, claim on insurance, and then sell the newly cleared land to property developers for a tidy profit. But there was one small hitch. The arsonist left his phone at the scene and the last message was sent to Richardson's number saying, job done. Richardson, who had been banned from horse racing 11 years earlier for attempting to switch horses he owned to rip off bookies, was found guilty in 1999 and sentenced to four years in prison. As if that wasn't enough, two years before his sentence with the club penniless, he decided to hire the cheapest manager possible, Mark Weaver. 
the former manager of Stockport County's club shop. The club were duly relegated from the Football League with a minus 83 goal difference. It's no thanks to Richardson that Doncaster are the stable Football League club they are today. 5. Redeveloping Molyneux Wolverhampton Wanderers are a club brimming with history. Established in 1877, they have won four FA Cups and even three First Division titles in six years between 1953 and 1956. By 1982, Molyneux, their home since 1889, needed to be redeveloped after failing to meet new safety standards implemented after the Bradford City Stadium fire. Funding a new 1.5 million stand during an economic recession cast the club into such dire financial straits that they found themselves in the fourth division for the first time in their history. Four years later, with two of the stands closed, creating an awful atmosphere on match days, they were saved from going bust when Wolverhampton Council bought the ground. The deal involved supermarket chain Asda wiping Wolves' debt on the premise that they were granted permission to build a new store nearby. 4. Moisey Whilst it's a stretch to suggest that the appointment of Moyes as Sir Alex Ferguson's successor in May 2013 ruined Man United, it certainly put the club back a few years. United had won five Premier League titles in the last seven years and finished 11 points clear of Man City the previous year. Having failed to secure top targets Guardiola, Klopp and Mourinho, they turned to Moyes, who had never won a trophy and had one top four finish to show for his 11 years at Everton. Although far from a vintage United side, it contained the ageing talents of Vidic, Ferdinand and Evra, Van Persie's 26 league goals have propelled them to the title. Moyes completely changed the backroom staff, failed to land any of his top targets, including Thiago and Fabregas, and ended up signing for Laney on deadline day. Ten months later and Moyes was sacked, the club were in seventh, guaranteed to finish with their lowest points tally in Premier League history and failed to qualify for the Champions League for the first time in 19 years. He failed to win a single game against top four opposition, lost six league games at home and finished with a 53% win record. The failure to appoint the right successor is still haunting the Red Devils to this day. 3. Mamek the Maniac in 2016, when Dravko Mamek finally stepped aside as executive director of Dinamo Zagreb, fans of Croatia's most successful club rejoiced. A physically intimidating and hot-headed man, Mamek was nothing short of a thug. Not only hiring and firing 22 different coaches between 2003 and 2016, but leaving behind a trail of destruction wherever he went. Over the years, he has been sanctioned for groping belly dancers, punching a Croatian FA director, breaking a local councillor's hand with a set of crutches, and celebrating a Dinamo victory with a Nazi salute. He despised the media and violently assaulted several journalists, once forcing one to hide in a bush from him for 10 minutes to avoid a beating. His crowning glory, though, if you could call it that, came when he ended a long, aggressive rant against the club's supporters, who were using social media to complain about his reign, with the line, I'm going to stick YouTube up my dick. Speaking on behalf of all YouTube, please don't. 2. The Viola Collapse By the end of the 1999-2000 season, Fiorentina talisman Gabriel Battistuta had hit 20-plus goals for the third year in a row. They had defeated reigning European champions Man United 2-0, an Italian film mogul, Vittorio Gacigori, had provided seemingly stable leadership for seven years. But despite winning the 2001 Coppa Italia under Roberto Mancini, things were about to unravel. The club revealed it was in €40 million Euros worth of debt and was forced to enter administration after failing to pay its players' wages. They were relegated to Serie B and forced to sell stars such as Rui Costa and Thomas Repka. But due to the scale of bankruptcy, they refused a spot in the league and liquidated, effectively failing to exist. Then in 2006, having already been found guilty of money laundering and cocaine possession, it was revealed Gechigori had stolen over 26 million euros from the club itself. But despite being reformed under current owner Diego Della Valle as ACF Fiorentina, they have never again matched the third place finish of 1999. A club saved from the brink of extinction caused by mismanagement and corruption. 1. Perugia on the brink. Topping our list of horrendous decisions is our third Italian story. Luciano Gauci, owner of current Serie B club Perugia, was the man who decided that signing Saidi Gaddafi was a good idea. Signed in the summer of 2003, along with Jay Boothroyd, who won an England cap in 2010, it soon became clear that Gaddafi was a horrendous footballer and was later banned for three years for testing positive for stimulants. Other highlights of his reign, if you can call them that, include trying to sign the captain of Sweden's women's team, pulling out of signing a player over rumours he was gay, and even attempting to bribe a referee with a racehorse. But worse was to come in 2002, when he terminated South Korean striker Andrew and Juan's contract after his golden goal knocked Italy out of that summer's World Cup. Perugia went bust in 2005, Luciano went into hiding for four years in the Dominican Republic and he was eventually given three years in prison for tax fraud. It took five years for the club to even be accepted into Italy's league structure again. Congratulations, you've reached the end of the video. We hope you enjoyed it. And if you're looking for more great content, why don't you click in this box here. And as always, don't forget to like and subscribe.